Hello, welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis, back on my sofa, watching recordings of live theatre shows from the isolation of my own home. Today I'm reviewing One Man, Two Governors, a National Theatre production from 2011 that's streaming on the National Theatre's YouTube channel until the 8th of April 2020. Concentrate, ain't ya? With two jobs. I mean, I can do it as long as I don't get confused. But I do get confused easily. But I don't get confused that easily. Yes, I do. I'm my own worst enemy. Stop being negative. I'm not being negative. I'm being realistic. I'll screw it up. I always do. Who screws it up? You. You're the role model for village idiots everywhere. Me. You're nothing without me. You're the cock up. Don't you call me a cock up, you cock up. <laughs> My first reaction to seeing this show on screen, uh, which I did see on stage back in 2011, was that it seemed shouty and a bit stilted. Everything I feared about recording stage shows. But before long I realised that uh, what NT Live have done is actually quite clever and very appropriate to this particular play. Richard Bean's script and Nicholas Heitner's direction are a tribute to Commedia dell'arte and uh, its influence on subsequent comedies such as uh, musical, pantomime and farce. They've given us a deliberately theatrical show, uh, shouty and with over-large gestures, which shouldn't work on screen. And in fact, NT Live has made hardly any concession to filming it, uh, barring the odd close-up. They've even retained many views of the proscenium arch, the actors aren't mic'd, as they often are for live recordings, so the sound is echoey. But what this all means is that you do get the feel of its theatricality. Well, that's my one minute summary. Keep watching for much more on the NT Live recording of One Man, Two Governors. One Man, Two Governors is probably best remembered as being James Corden's finest moment on stage, and this recording is worth seeing for his performance alone. But it is a production of all-round excellence, starting with the script. This play is an adaptation of Goldoni's The Servant of Two Masters, a 1746 classic comedy that came directly out of the Italian tradition of Commedia dell'arte, which is pretty much the earliest form of European theatre. Playwright Richard Bean has stayed faithful to Goldoni's original story, uh, relocating it to the 1960s, uh, recent enough to feel contemporary but long ago enough to be able to get away with sexist stereotypes and language. James Corden is Francis Henshaw uh, in a checked outfit, which is a toned-down version of the Comedy dell'arte's Harlequin character's traditional checkered uniform. He decides to earn some extra money by working for two bosses, and then gets into all manner of confusion trying to juggle those jobs. More than an adaptation of Goldoni, Richard Bean serves up a tribute to Commedia dell'arte's influence on theatre. The standard characters and plots, so recognisable across all cultures and over the centuries, form the basis of many of our comedies and comic traditions ever since. You'll find it in everything from De Ponte's librettos for Mozart's operas to Benny Hill. So, we get a music hall style production, with an emphasised proscenium arch and a skiffle band playing musical interludes between scenes. The set, designed by Mark Thompson, uses what appear to be um, traditional flats, you know, pieces of flat wooden scenery, to add to that old-fashioned feel. And then we get pantomime elements, uh, pantomime itself being a direct descendant of Commedia dell'arte, such as a slush scene where uh, Francis serves dinner to both his governors while trying to keep them apart in separate rooms and eating most of the meal himself. Flames and foam form part of the climax of that scene. Talking to the audience and uh, audience participation and the accompanying improvisation, familiar to both music hall and pantomime, are a key feature and they provide some of the funniest moments, whether they're really as spontaneous as they appear or not. We get knockabout farce, uh, such as uh, Francis falling over a chair whilst trying to catch a nut in his mouth, or Stanley, one of his governors, uh, using him as a punch bag, or one of the most laugh-out-loud moments in the play, when an elderly servant, Alfie, played fearlessly by Tom Eden, is pushed headlong down some stairs. In fact, he has many of the funniest physical moments, from being hit by a cricket bat uh, to having his pacemaker turned up so he shoots around the room like a pinball. 
These for me were the best bits of the evening and credit here goes to the associate director Cal McChrystal who was responsible for the physical comedy. There's even a scene where two characters have their trousers down, reminding me at least of the inevitable moment in the legendary Whitehall farces where Brian Ricks would lose his pants. Now, just as Commedia dell'arte benefited from the audience's familiarity with characters and plots, modern-day comedy audiences like the familiarity of a catchphrase, and there are catchphrases galore in One Man, Two Governors. The silly young woman, played deadpan by uh, Claire Lamb, keeps saying, I don't understand. The reformed villain Lionel's most memorable experiences all seem to have happened at Parkhurst, a word weighted with significance by uh, actor Trevor Laird's glances at the audience. The script is also full of wonderful wordplay. Uh, the alliterative repartee involving the phrase he was diagnosed with diarrhoea but died of diabetes in Dagenham. Uh, the non sequiturs like we had to put newspaper down because I'd had a banana or you can't trust a Spaniard alone with a Swiss roll. The hyperbolic metaphors, a floral clock in the middle of winter, all the flowers dead, the hour hand pointlessly turning, the minute hand stuck on a long gone begonia. And as to Nicholas Heitner's production, you couldn't ask for more variation of pace and tightly choreographed movement. The acting is first class. James Corden has a great ability to connect with an audience, so important uh, in a role that requires interaction with them, and a warmth that enables him to gain sympathy for the mess his deceptions have landed him in. And like other oversized comics, Oliver Hardy being the prime example, he also extracts humour uh, from being unexpectedly delicate uh, in his movements and surprisingly agile. The rest of the cast extract everything they can from their largely two-dimensional characters. Uh, let's look at the two governors who are also lovers, a further plot complication. Jemina Rupa is great at putting on a tough exterior while hiding a quivering heart. Oliver Chris is perfect as an upper-class twit. Uh, also getting a lot of laughs from being serious while behaving ludicrously is Daniel Rigby as a pompous young actor. Susie Toes is Francis's love interest Dolly. Uh, she's a bookkeeper and her seaside postcard body contrasts comically with her feminist ideas. The elders in this play, Fred Ridgway as Pauline's criminal dad and the previously mentioned Trevor Laird, both add to the verbal comedy. I will give the original stage show five stars without question, but this uh, recording of such a love letter to theatre could never be as good as being there. Still, I recommend that you spend your evening at home watching uh, this show, and I give NT Lives, One Man, Two Governors, three stars. I hope you found this review worth watching. Uh, over the next few weeks of incarceration, I'll be looking at more theatre shows hitting the small screen. The next national theatre show on YouTube is Jane Eyre, which starts on the 9th of April. To be the first to know when I post a new review, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the button at the bottom of the screen. And you can also read my reviews on my website, oneminutetheatrereviews.co.uk. Thank you for watching.